Now, next uh, after general examination, I said you have to examine the first system is the respiratory because we are talking about the respiratory system. Now, respiratory system as you examine any other system is also is the same way is examined means under four headings you examine inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. Those are four headings same as you do in every system and if I ask you a question out of these four which one is the most important my answer would be inspection. That is why this is kept like this. Otherwise, somebody would have kept like ascalte and, and, and what you do? You mostly you see the you do the auscultation. So, first thing is first always. So, while you inspect, so inspection in respiratory system examination is very important. Now, in inspection, I used to say that you have to look for five issues, five things, always remember. But before looking for those physical signs, one more thing I would like to tell you that while the inspection there would be adequate exposure, there should be adequate <coughs> light and inspection of respiratory system what I have seen many people they do from front maximum they have done from the back and they miss about the lateral profile of the chest. So, what, what I am trying to say while you inspect usually in the books there are prescribed as you see from the front, you see from the back, you see from the lateral side and you see from the above down and below upwards. So, get an exact idea of of what are the findings in the inspection. Because inspection and I always uh, make a rule that uh, uh, while you do inspection the first point is the is the movement of chest. See that if anybody is sitting adjacent to me and if I have adequately exposed him the first thing I would like to see is the movement of the chest. Then the next point immediately I would like to see shape of the chest. Then I would like to have a comment about the trachea if it is possible. Trachea means you see by the trail sign during the inspection you see a trail sign and then you say that trachea, is shift, trachea might be shifted on that particular side. Then you the fourth thing is apex beat movement of the chest shape of the chest, trachea, apex beat and the fifth thing what is seen in respiratory system examination which many of us miss is the spines. Because you should remember that many if there is a spinal deformity there could be deformed shape of chest even there is no respiratory disease that is why spines are always thoroughly looked. So, during inspection these five things are seen and another thing you should always remember while doing the physical while doing the examination that for every examination any point you are examining you must think what is the appropriate position of the patient in which you will examine that particular point. Suppose you want to see a trail sign and somebody is is, 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 is is sitting like tilting his neck on the one side, you cannot comment. So, for a trail sign what, what posture is essentially required? Somebody either sitting erect or standing erect, erect not tilted on one side and slightly neck flex then you see which of the sternal head of the sternomastoid muscle is a prominent that tells about the trail sign. And trail sign most of the time it may be taken as the trachea is shifted, but it is not necessary. There could be many issues otherwise in fascias and other things in muscles which can produce a false positive trail sign. So, that you have to remember. So, like say next is apex beat. Now, question is 
which of the position apex beat should be seen or felt ultimately apex beat is a is a not a finding of basically inspection but many times these beat finally you ask you you just do the palpation and there you palpate the apex beat so we'll talk when when you talk about the palpation so the the during inspection you have you have to see the movement what is the importance of movement of chest movement of chest tells you which side is diseased one which is a very hundred dollar question always in our mind that that where is the disease right side left side upper portion lower portion and that decision is taken that's why i said when do inspection the first thing ideally should be done is the movement because with that you will see every st it, everything further suppose somebody's right side is moving less now you can also argue <coughs> no left side is moving more if you because it is always a comparative finding but in chest you remember nothing moves more it will be either normal or it will be less so the side which is moving less is the disease side that rule you have to always keep in mind and uh, so movement you have to compare in each areas and you find out that uh, since we are doing inspection if we have still not touch it but since the, the, during the inspection you can very clearly uh, come out with the which which side is moving less or which area is moving less and that is possibly a disease side then after that you 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 say about the shape of the chest that shape of the chest there are two variations one is uh, short stout and thick it is also known as thick chest which many of us have and another variation normal variation i am talking is the thin chest which is long which is thin so this variation you have always keep in mind whether you are seeing a patient which have which have of thick chest which have has thin chest so that's the and then shape of the chest you know that it is elliptical in shape elliptical in shape means the the transverse diameter is more as compared to ap diameter there is a ratio of 5 is to 7 so when it becomes when 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 interposterior diameter increases then you call it as a barrel shaped chest and that indicates the the over inflation in the chest so what i'm so then you do about the shape of the chest shape of the chest while you comment there could be bulging there could be flattening anything can happen in the shape of chest as i said in the movement of chest it moves in one direction but the shape of the chest can move in both the direction there could be bulging there could be retraction so in that way you have to just inspect all the areas and compare it from the <coughs> opposite sides that's about the shape of the chest then uh, you have to see the trachea by trail sign then you have to see the any pulsations visible in the over the precardium that becomes a pulse beat and then finally you just uh, look over the spine and see if there is obvious any deformity <coughs> it could be scoliosis it could be kyphosis it could be kyphoscoliosis why this is important i have already talked to you because sometimes there is only scoliosis and there is only kyphosis and kyph and it can generate a lot of findings in the chest and otherwise the chest respiratory system may be within normal limits so that's why always we include this spine into the inspection so after inspection you go for palpation and palpation i always say that all the points of inspection it is mean those five has to be confirmed and then you have to add two more things and those two things are first you have to add about the 
what is the expansion of the chest now movements and expansion they are different terms they are not one so expansion of the chest and the next thing what you have to add is the vocal fremetus and equivalence of vocal fremetus while we talk about the auscultation will be the vocal regimen they are the same thing just to make fool of you they have been kept at two places so many times people say some different they say vocal fremetus is different vocal regimen which is not possible both are the same thing but it is how you demonstrate those physical signs in 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 palpation and in auscultation that is a different so during palpation what you have to confirm all those five issues means movement of the chest i'll not demonstrate here with patient sometimes next time when we'll say we'll be we can demonstrate with the patient but you have to see the movements whatever you have seen you have to confirm it by palpation and there's method of doing it so movements you have to confirm trachea you have to confirm and for trachea again same thing you have to think that what what is the real position what is the actual position in which you palpate the trachea for the palpation of trachea what you have to do you put your finger over the suprasternal notch move the finger on one side then on the other side where you feel more resistance it means trachea has shifted on to that side that is the how you confirm the trachea whatever impression you have got during the inspection by trail sign that you confirm during the palpation you have to confirm if there is any visible pulsation you have to confirm about the apex beat now apex beat is as i said earlier also it's a finding of palpation neither it is a finding of auscultation nor nor the inspection because as you see what is the definition of apex beat apex beat is the lowermost outermost part of the cardiac impulse which is best felt so as per definition it is a part of it is a part of palpation so you i was telling you that what are the position in which you palpate for apex beat when you palpate for apex <coughs> beat because this is the final thing after if it is not palpable you you may declare that apex beat is not palp many, many times apex beat is not palpable so what do you do before you declare that apex beat is not palpable the first position is either first position ideally should be the lie while while the patient is lying down first position for palpating apex beat is lying down position lying supine and how you palpate the the, the apex beat you put your whole palm over the precardium and try to feel that some pulse some pulsation and then you localize with the help of one finger you localize it because you have to localize it if it is diffuse as per definition i talked you it is the outermost and lowermost part of the cardiac impulse which is best felt so lying down is the first posture then as if it is not palpable in lying down ask the patient to sit it may apex beat may little change the position and you may able to palpate it then still if you are not able to palpate you may ask the patient to lie on left lateral side and still it is not palpable then you may ask your patient to do some exercise mild exercise provided you have to assess provided patient can tolerate that much of exercise then you can ask him to do exercise and then you palpate again if it is not palpable after these proceed these 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 <coughs> attempts then you have got every right to declare that apex beat is not palpable and uh, 
as I said, one of the position is left lateral side. But in some of the books, it has written that this is not a very preferred position. Why it is not a preferred position? Because when you ask the patient to lie onto the left lateral side position, the position of apex beat may change. It may be good for cardiology, where you wanted to know the more you wanted to know about the character of the apex beat. But for respiratory medicine, for, for the respiratory physicians, we are more interested in knowing the position. So, although while lying on the left lateral side, you may be able to palpate the apex beat, but then question comes, is it the real, because here we are more interested in position, that is why some of the book have, 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 have a little objection that one should not do on the la la left lateral side. But to my understanding, if the apex beat is not there, you can do it, but that, that, that thing you have to keep in mind whatever position you may be getting, it may be little fallacious. So, so after, tra after, after confirming the movement of the chest, shape of the chest, trachea, apex beat and finally, you confirm the spines. And in confirming the spines, what you have to do, you have to mark each of the spinous process and you have to see what is the shape of the spine. Kyphosis will be visible from very distance, but the scoliosis sometimes is not visible. So, you have to, you have to mark those lines, those points and make a line and see that how uh, the spine is behaving. So, that, that and then uh, as I said, you have to add two more things that is the expansion of the chest, expansion, normally expansion of the chest is about 5 to 7 centimeters. But in case where lung is totally over inflated, say in COPD, the expansion, because the lung is fixed in a full inspiration, so the expansion becomes very less and many books have talked that if expansion is less than 2 centimeter, then it may indicate that there is a over inflated chest. So, an, an expansion is while measuring the expansion, you have to have each step and it is done in the males, it is measured at the level of nipples and in the females, it is measured below the mammary area, some mammary area. So, that is how you, you just make it, you ask the patient to take deep breath and then how much it is expanding, you note it down. So, that is the and the second point you add in a palpation is the is the vocal frameters. Vocal frameters means you do with the your hands, either the flat of the hands or with the ulnar side of the hand and you just uh, keep it over the chest on both side and you ask the patient to say one, 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 one or one, two, three, anything you prefer and the vocal frameters and so the vocal resonance will depend upon how loud a person is speaking and they can the, the conduction of air, how, how, how the air is conducting in both the things. So, usually we say that do not speak very loudly, you say 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and then you compare on both the sides to so know about the vocal frameters. We will talk more about, we will talk in auscultation about the vocal resonance, but that in both the things implies the similar meaning.